Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room, the reverse alphabetizing of my new overflow room, and we're on Ricard Strauss. And I, are we ever going to get through Ricard Strauss? I, yes, we are. I mean, we definitely are. We're, we are going to get there. It's just going to take a while. Sorry. But, oh, my God, how much stuff. All right. Let's get to it. Here we go. We have four last songs with, uh, who's doing this one? Renee Fleming with Eschenbach of the Houston Symphony. A bunch of you have said that you really enjoy this record. You also get orchestral songs and the Rosen Cavalier Suite. And I mean, you know, there's so many excellent recordings of the four last songs. It really just comes down to what singer you like. And that's why I have these because I'm not sure what singer I like. I like lots of singers doing the four last songs. I just like the four last songs. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Then we've got Minnesota Orchestra with Edo DeVart, God knows why, doing an Alpine Symphony, the Suite for 13 Wind Instruments, Till Oil and Spiegel, Don Juan, and the Sinfonia Domestica. These were on Virgin Classics, back when Virgin was scraping around looking for people to do stuff. And this is who they found. Enough said. Renee Fleming does Strauss Heroines with Christoph Eschenbach, Barbara Bonney, and Susan Graham. So you've got uh, De Rosen Cavalier, the Act One monologue, the trio and finale, the Arabella duet from Act One, and Capriccio, the moonlight music, and the closing scene. And Fleming always had a beautiful, creamy, Straussy voice, and she sounds very creamy and Straussy. Yes, lovely. Strauss conducts Strauss. Okay, we've already seen a bunch of these reissued in various ways by various labels. Naxos, APR, God knows who else has them. Everybody does. They're public domain. Anybody can snag them and claim to reissue them. Um, these are on Prizer. These are the, this is that 1940s Strauss Festival. 1941, you know, in Bavaria, when the Nazis were all marching around and Strauss was conducting his own music with complete disinterest. I mean, really, they're just not very interesting. But it's Strauss. Oh, yes! Fire Snot, yo, yo, lovely Fire Snot, this early Strauss opera, Feuer's Not, this ridiculous, silly, stupid opera about a wizard who curses a town by putting out all their fire until he can have sex with the mayor's daughter. Um, and the sex scene is really very, like Strauss always did great, great sex scenes. They're not love music. It's not love. It's sex. It's the act being portrayed. You can really kind of tell. And it's with Julia Varity and Bernd Weichel um, and Heinz Fricke on, in the, with the Munich Radio, Radio whatever orchestra, Radio Orchestra on arts music. So it's good to have fire snot. It really is. I actually saw it live. You know, um, uh, what's his name? Um, who does orchestra now? Leon Botstein, who can be a really uninteresting conductor, um, did a very, very fine concert version um, with uh, the American Symphony. Uh, what was it? I don't know, 10 years ago? It was a few years ago at Carnegie Hall. But he, he, he did it beautifully. And uh, it was, or maybe it was orchestra now, I don't know. But whoever it was, he had really good singers. He conducted it like he was really interested. And it was, it was a wonderful concert. I mean, really wonderful. Intermezzo. Uh, Lucia Pop, Fisher D. Scow, and, and like other famous people. Um, Intermezzo was that opera that Strauss wrote about his own life about an experience he had when his wife thought he was being unfaithful and it features a composer and a jealous wife and you know they wind up making up in the end his wife was horrified by this this is this is fun to have there aren't that many recordings of intermezzo and this is savalish with bavarian radio as part of that savalish doing all the weird strauss stuff that he could get his hands on then we've got oh the alpine symphony in don juan with herbert blomstedt didn't we just have that i think we just looked at that one didn't we well we just saw this one with the Staatskapelle Dresden, I know that. And, uh, oh, yes, there it is. Oh, that was Ashkenazi. And uh, there, oh, yeah, there it goes. Yep, I have two. Don't ask me why. I have no idea how this happened. I really don't. Uh, Strauss Tone Poems with Nimi Yarvi. I like this series. It needs to be boxed up. It needs a little box instead of these. It's like in three twofers plus some singleton issues and other things. And he did lots of songs, all of his Strauss recordings on Chandos really should be put together in a, in a coherent and sensible way because they are really good. This one has the Second Symphony, which nobody cares about, and it's, it's a pretty work. I mean, it's not 
great, but it's, it's a decent symphony in traditional form. The ch romance for cello, again, that we just saw um, Heinrich Schiff do, and the, in the previous video, I guess. And six songs with, let's see, Eileen Holza, soprano. So, I mean, these are really, really good pieces, and we really should have a, a Yarvi thing with that. We should. Oh, Strauss conducts his own stuff, part two on Prizer. Um, these are 44 recordings with the Vienna Philharmonic. And we've got, well, this has the Bourgeois Gentilhomme, which is nice, the orchestral suite. And uh, let's see, Zarathustra, Don Juan, Till Eulenspiegel, and Heldenleben, Death of Transfiguration, and the Sinfonia Domestica. I mean, all in somewhat grotty sound, but you know, there you go. Strauss always said conducting his own music bored him, and it does, you can tell, bores us too. Mm. Uh, Strauss, Zarathustra, Heldenleben, Boston Symphony, Azawa. Oh, these got trashed when they came out. I remember everyone thought that they were just so limp and, and un uninvolved. And, and, and I actually think they're very nice. They're beautifully played. They're well recorded. They sound better on this issue than they originally did on LP. They were early digitals, which may have been part of the problem. But I mean, you know, I, yes, Azawa and Strauss was always a little bit undemonstrative, just sort of straight ahead, you know, but um, it's, it, it's Strauss. I mean, it doesn't dawdle, at least. You know, they don't drag. Oh, this is hot stuff. Oh, juicy, juicy, juicy hot stuff. This is a live recording, a live radio broadcast recording of Electra with the Cologne Radio Symphony Orchestra. This is on Koch. It came out on another label, too. I don't remember exactly which. But it's with, with Rez Fischer as Clytemnestra and Astrid Varney on fire as Electra and Leonie Riesenek as Chrysothemis. Whoa, baby, remember Riesenek did Electra in the Bohm video, which really upset Birgit Nielsen, who thought that was her role. Remember that business? Anyway, this is just amazing. And it sounds great. It's mono, but the sound is terrific. Great first class radio broadcast quality. But what year was this? It was the 50s at some point, 1953. And it's just a smoking Electra. I love it. It's one of my reference recordings. It really is. It's just great. Uh, oh, let's look at this one. We've got um, Russian Strauss. It's, we've got Dvorak's Cello Concerto with, with Boris Kaken conductor, Chaiken conductor with Rostropovich, and Rostropovich doing Don Quixote. Yeah! With Kirill Kondrashin and the Moscow State Philharmonic with Dmitry Shabalin, viola. Um, fun to have. This is on Russian Revelation. Is it a revelation? Well, Ross Rapovich went in to do Don Quixote about 10,000 times, but those are the earlier ones. Then we've got, oh yes, remember I said Ashkenazi did the Alpine Symphony more than once? I started this in the last video. Yeah, here's the other one. It's on Ondine with the Czech Philharmonic. Well, it's interesting to hear the Czech Philharmonic do it. Um, I wonder if this is the same speed as the other one. And the Rosenkavalier waltz sequence. Hang on one second. Let's check because it's right here. Here we go. We just did it in the last video. Here is the other Alpine Symphony. 50 minutes and 9 seconds versus 49 minutes and 9 seconds. Okay, 60 seconds. That's your difference. So it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. But it is fun to compare the Cleveland Orchestra to the Czech Phil. And it's on Ondine. It's very, I mean, it's, I don't know. I don't know why they did it. But I'm, I'll keep it. Oh, 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 oh. Four last songs with Jesse Norman and Court Mazur, one of the most iconic records ever and one of the most magnificent tributes to the human voice that you'll ever hear in your life. You also get some, uh, on this particular disc, let's see, you get the four last songs and the Weisendonk leader. That's what they have here. Um, originally, I think there were some other orchestral songs. Yes, there were. I don't know, they could have put them on here. There was more than enough room for them, but that's okay. Oh boy, this is just to die for. It's unbelievable and really slow. But oh, the singing when her soul is. I don't know, she's got enough breath in her. It's unbelievable. And we have the Cleveland Orchestra and George Sell on Masterworks Heritage Don Quixote with Pierre Fournier and Abraham Skernick viola and Raphael Druyan violin along with the Horn Concerto with Myron Bloom and Don Juan. These are classic Strauss recordings. I mean, fabulously well played. Sell was a Strauss guy. He knew him. He liked him. He plays the crap out of him. 
What, what more can you ask for? Alice Italian, I, I got this because it's the Slavic Philharmonic and Zdenek Kozler, who I always liked. He's a good conductor. And you've got the, the symphonic fragment from Die Liebe der Dane and the Rosenkavalier waltz sequence number two on Naxos, Strauss in the Provinces, you might call this. Fun to listen to. It really is. I love Alice Italian. I just do. It's so pretty. It really is. I mean, there are better versions of it by like Riccardo Muti several times and whatnot, but I'm not complaining. I'm keeping that one just for the fun of it. Then we've got, oh, oh, Carion's EMI, Ein Heldenleben, and Wagner, let's see, Flying Dutch Beat Overture and Parsifal Preludes to Acts 1 and 3. Now, the Wagner stuff on this is terrific. The Strauss, Heldenleben, Carion is so humorless. Oh, my God. It's heavy-handed and thick and too slow and just totally without joy. I don't know why. Where's the fun? Where's the fun? His DG recording was just the same. And then we've got the Symphonia Domestica. And let's see the prelude to Tristan and Isolde and the Lohengrin preludes to Acts 1 and 3. Again, the Wagner's great. The Domestica is really pretty good. It's very good. And he does let the horns rip in the finale, which they absolutely have to do. I mean, I remember the first time I heard it. You know, I played this on, on the radio when I was in college, this performance, um, on WJHU in Baltimore. And wow, I mean, I was impressed. And I, I still am, actually. So there we have it, another big pile of Strauss. Wasn't that fun? Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.